at that point in time when you folks were meeting up to go to Paraquats? Yeah, I know I hadn't signed in. Well, what did you observe Max do? Um, he had walked off to go ask Molly, and that's about all that I know. I was just sitting next to his car and waiting to see if we could go or not. Where was Molly? I'm actually not too sure about that. Yeah, but the reason why you went down there was to meet up with them based on a prearranged plan? No, um, it was, that was the meeting spot. Wasn't that the meeting spot to meet up with them to go to Paraquats pursuant to a plan that you guys had already? No, they had not known about the plan. I had asked them at the Haiku Community Center if they would be willing to go with me. Would it be your testimony then that you at no point during the searches nor after the searches had an opportunity to view those sign-in sheets that you're referring to? Mm, yeah, not me personally. <coughs> well, wouldn't it be true that you had a concern about a Nick Martinelli being there at that point, and that you checked those logs or those sign-in sheets to investigate about that? Uh, no, not me. So your testimony is that your or Charlie's sisters from the mainland were in charge of those sign-in logs? I believe at some points they were, but I wasn't too... Um focused on the who was in charge of those things. You mentioned your mother being at that community center. Do you know whether she, did you observe personally whether she had any role in those sign-in logs? I didn't. <clears throat> okay. Let's um, start moving back to where we were and let me ask you this. Um, can I clarify that to be clear, your testimony is that when you decided to go out there, well, strike that, that when you got to the Paraquats area, was it your testimony that you followed a ping to the closest area? No, I didn't really follow the ping. I didn't have it open. Um, I just kind of went in that general direction towards the bridge. Okay, so when, we're, when you're referring to that ping, what ping are you referring to? Your mother's from back on February 10th, or a ping that you did prior to doing the searches? Um, they, they were all the same ping, it was just a Charlie's ping that I was following. Okay, so you were going off what your independent recollection off of your mother's, what you observed on your mother's phone back on February 10th? Um, Yes, mine and hers. Or, yeah, mine and hers. Okay. We'll come back to that. Okay, you testified, and I just want to clarify this. You testified that when you entered the woods, you took a right into the forest. Yes. Is that accurate? Would you have been walking down the path towards the bay to turn right, or would you have been walking back up the path towards Hana Highway to have made the right. I would have been walking up towards Hana Highway. Okay, so if you were walking back up towards Hana Highway, would it be fair to say that if you took a right, you would have been going back into the Haiku direction? Yes. Can you tell us about how far you found that DVD from the f from that refrigerator that you testified about? Um, maybe six feet away from the, the actual dirt road on Paraquats. Okay. 
And then you testified that at some point you made it down to the river, right? Yes. He, or was it your testimony that you really didn't get too close to the skirt and the shirt, or would that be your testimony? Um, I mean, I didn't stand over it. I did get close enough to be able to recognize it. <clears throat> did you touch it in any way, or either the skirt or the shirt? Not the skirt or the shirt. <clears throat> and you testified that Molly um, had, well, let me ask you this. You testified that Molly was holding up, um, I think, the shirt when you arrived. Yes. Well, let me ask you that. Was she already holding it up when you arrived, or...? Yeah, when she came into view, um, I saw the shirt uh, being held with the stick. <coughs> so it wasn't like she picked it up when you got there. She, was, she had already picked it up? Uh, yeah. And your testimony is that she used a stick not any kind of machete or anything like that? No. Okay, would it be fair to say that, <clears throat> well, let me ask you this. How did you pick up the DVD? Um, I picked it up way at the, the corners to make sure no fingerprints got on it. Okay, so your point there is that you were trying not to contaminate the evidence? Yes. But you picked it up from the ground, right? Yeah, I did. And then you carried it to Molly, right? Yes. And you put it back down on the ground, right? Yes. And you picked it up again, right? Um, not me. I hadn't picked it up again. Okay, who, where, where did it go? Um, I'm not too sure who picked it up, but someone else did, and we, we put all of the evidence in the back of the truck. Okay, but as far as that DVD, did it ever make it down to the stream, or did, was it left? It was on the left path, on the way to the stream. Yeah, it was left with the clothes when we went down to the stream. Okay. And I take it that at some point it had to get picked up again, right? Yes. And then it got put down into the you, what? Um, according to your testimony, it would be that at some point it got put in the truck, right? Yeah. At some point it got taken out of the truck, right? Yes. Um, and would it be fair to say that you have no idea who handles that DVD once it gets up to the Haiku house? Uh, yes. Would it be fair to say that not only do you not know who handled that DVD, but you don't know how that DVD was handled by anybody? Yeah. <clears throat> um, after you folks find the blanket and the sweatshirt, the jeans and the tape that you testified about. Would it be accurate to say that Max went back upstream to do more searching? Uh, yes, he did. And why was that? Um, we thought we had smelled something else. Okay, and prior to him going back upstream, did you folks go downstream um, to do further searching? Uh, no, we did not. So at no time did you guys go like 30 feet down the river <clears throat> before coming back and just laying that blanket out? No. <clears throat> Can I? If I could just clarify in terms of the position of the rolls of tape, your testimony was that those rolls of tape were uh, found together about three inches apart? Yeah. And that was, <clears throat> when did you observe that? Uh, right after seeing the, the jacket and the pants. Okay, were you, were you still on the bank of the stream, or were you already in the stream, I guess, relative to you falling down? Um, was that before or after you fell down? It was after, um, and I believe I was on the side of the stream um, closest to the dirt road. OK. 
Can we be fair to say when you observed those two uh, tape rolls, nobody had touched them yet? Yeah, no one had touched them. <clears throat> and your testimony was that they were kind of like in a little pool that was made out of little rocks? Yeah. picture that has been entered in the exhibit as States Exhibit 108, that what this picture uh, depicts in terms of the position of the blanket and the sweatshirt and the jeans, this is not the original position that the items were found in? No, they were not. <clears throat> and as far as the taking of that picture, um, would it be your testimony that it was taken before or after the discovery of those tape rolls? I believe it was <clears throat> right before. I can't recall for sure. <clears throat> okay, and how is it that you are able to ID that blanket as being Carly's. I recognized it right away. Um, she had it often. Okay, but you'd agree with me that <clears throat> the best that you can say about having seen that blanket with Carly is that you, you had seen it before in her residence, right? Yes. But you couldn't remember the last time you saw it in her truck, in her forerunner, right? Yeah. Okay, but you'd agree with me that by the date of February 14th, you were telling Detect, well, do you recall speaking with Detective Lee on the date of February 14th about how you were able to identify the blanket? I do remember talking to him, um, but not too much about what. And then um, it would be your testimony that, as far as what you observed, only the blanket was covered with maggots when you made your first observations of all of the items, right? Yes. Um, to your knowledge, who picked up the tape rolls? I believe it was Max. Did I hear, and, and correct me if I'm mistaken, but did I hear that um, you testify that there were um, pieces of tape other than the rolls of tape around that area? No, okay. I don't remember saying that. Okay, so can you tell us what you folks did when you decided to leave the stream area? Um, what did you folks do with the items? Um, after Max had gone up the river? Yeah, um, I guess whenever you guys decided to take the items um, out of the stream. I believe we were trying to decide whether or not to take it or just leave it, go find service and call someone. 
um, I don't know who it was uh, or when it was that we decided to take it, but I believe Max was the one to grab them. Okay, so is it your testimony that you did not see Max grab it then, or are you testifying that you did see him grab it? I did see him grab it. And where did he grab grab it from? Uh, the blanket he grabbed from the very uh, ends of it. Well, in terms of uh, from what, I guess, was it from the position that they were in in that picture in the stage <coughs> exhibit 108? Is that where Max grabbed it from? Yeah. Okay. And then he grabs the blanket by the ends. How does how is everything else taken off? I believe he grabbed it with his other hand, but I'm not too sure on that stuff. I was more focused on the blanket. Well, what did you see happen to the blanket? Um, he was carrying it up through the forest and put it into the back of the truck. And how? So he was. Is it your testimony that he was carrying the blanket by the, the ends all the way up to the truck? Um, yes, just with one hand though. He was carrying all four of the ends. And did you observe where the jeans and sweater and tape rolls were when he was doing that? I don't recall about, uh, those parts. Okay, you did not have them? No. Did you see Molly with them? <laughs> No, I don't. Okay, do you stop and pick up the blue, blue tank top and skirt, or what happens with that? Um, I'm actually not too sure. I hadn't grabbed anything. I, I believe I just followed Max back up to the truck. Okay, so your testimony is that um, however they got back up to the truck, you didn't carry anything? Yeah. And your testimony would be that it was pitch black by the time you folks were walking back to the car, right? Yes. So, so how long did it take for Max to go up to the bridge area to go follow that smell? Uh, I think it only took him... Um, um, Ten minutes, maybe less. So your testimony would be that in terms of this picture, it was taken about the time that Max went up to the bridge? Um, that picture was taken while he was still next to all of us, me and Molly. Okay. Um, how soon after the taking of this picture did he go up the bridge, to um, the bridge area? It was probably five minutes. And by the time he got back, it was pitch black, right? Yeah, it was getting, um, it was getting pretty dark uh, by the time he got back. So your testimony is that this picture was taken 10 to 15 minutes before it was pitch black out in that area. Um, you know, I, I do object because counsel's calculations are <coughs> far off. It's, it does not match the testimony of Ms. Weiss. Objections are what It wasn't fully pitch black. <coughs> Just for the record, the picture you're going to refer to is? Stacey did one only count. Thank you. <coughs> And it's your testimony that it was because it was so pitch black that you folks made the decision to take the items, right? You have an objection based on the last answer. That's not the testimony of Ms. Weiss. That's why I'm asking her. Well, you can't misstate the testimony, Your Honor. The objection is sustained. Why was the reason you would testify as to why you left? Um, there was no service and we didn't know when we would end up getting service. And it was getting dark, and we also didn't know if we would be able to find the stuff or if it would get washed away. We just, um, you know, thought it would be better to grab it. 
So the fact that it was pitch black was a factor in your taking the items? Judge objection, that's not the objection. Thank you. Judge, she just testified that it was because it was dark, and I'm now clarifying that. He's adding What's to it. What's the judge know about that? She can say no. Excuse me. Her response was there was no service and we didn't know when we would end up getting service and it was getting dark. Right, and, I, and I'm just going to reconcile that with her prior testimony that she said it was pitch dark. Uh, and that's why I think you need to rephrase your question. Thank you. I mean, when you say that, when you're talking about this time period when there's no service and you make the decision to leave, you agree with me that that's after you folks had already decided to leave the stream area when it was pitch dark, right? It was, um, I mean, it was getting dark. By the time we were walking up and we had decided, it became pitch black. I mean, didn't you testify that by the time Max came back from the bridge area, it was pitch black? I'm sure that was not her testimony, Your Honor. That was counsel's statement. The, uh, the objection is over. You may answer the question. Not that I recall. Um, I, it was just getting darker by that point. Mm -hmm. How long had you lived on, o on Maui up to that point in time? I believe it was <coughs> maybe three or four years. And that was up to this 2014 February period? Yes. How long had you, well, how many times had you been out to that PNI area prior to these searches? Um, not too many times, maybe five at the most. Okay, because you mentioned about something about how the Hana sunsets differently from other places in the world, right? Um, I did notice that the sun, for some reason, it stays the same kind well, of light. Why don't you describe that phenomenon to the jury? How I, Hana is different from every other place in the world, how it doesn't get darker with time. Judge, I object to counsel making this up. She never mentioned it being different the from objection. any other place in the world. The objection is sustained. Thank you. <coughs> Can you describe to the juror this, the jurors this phenomenon that you observe? out in the Kenai area. And I object to that argument. The form of the question is argumentative. The objection is sustained. Thank you. You can rephrase the question if you wish. <coughs> I'll move on now. Thank you. <coughs> Your testimony is that one of the reasons you folks decide to leave is because there's no phone reception, right? Oh, uh, yeah, in that location. And there was no phone reception the whole time you folks were there? Is that your testimony? Yes. Let me ask you this. Did you ever remain in the area to wait for the police after finding those items? but before taking those items home? Um, no, we had not waited in that area for police because we weren't able to call them. Do you ever recall speaking with a Detective Biggis about what you folks did? Um, I don't recall the name, but I do remember talking to a police officer about that night. Well, let me ask you this. Do you remember telling anybody that you remained in the area waiting for police? Um, <coughs> not that I recall. Who was the first successful contact 
through your telephone or whatever means that you made after leaving Paraquats? It was my mom. So you were able to contact your mother at some point? Yes. Okay, so at some, and that's at some point when you get phone connection? Yeah. Now, to be clear, that first phone call is not to the police? No. Okay, but you testified that even while you were out there, you were cautious and worried about contamination of evidence, right? Yes. But your testimony is that as soon as you get phone reception, the first call you make is your mother. Yes, me personally, I had called my mother. You didn't call the police to address any concerns about preservation of evidence, right? No, not me personally. <clears throat> and in fact, at no point, well, let me ask you, at some point, now that you have reception, do you call the police? Um, we had lost connection when you started going, but... Uh... Okay, let me, just, let me just stop you there and clarify that. You're saying that after you stopped at a place with reception, you called your mother, right? Yes. And then your testimony is that your folks started driving again? Yes. And then you lost reception? Um, we, we lost reception kind of while we were still sitting there. It was coming and going. So as you folks start driving, your testimony is that you definitely don't have reception as you're driving, right? Yes. And your testimony is that that's why you didn't call police at that time? Uh, yeah. Now you'd agree with me that this area that you contact your mother successfully from is a service spot right near Paraquats, right? I don't think it was too near. I, I believe the first area that we were at when we got service was right after Bamboo Forest. Okay, so your testimony is that your te testimony is that there was not a service spot right after Paraquats. Not that I recall. Okay, I have to apologize. You know, this might take a little logistics because it's on recording. This one. Go ahead. Okay, I'll try to find it. Well, I'll come back to that, okay? Then we'll move on. But to be clear, your testimony is that 
There was no service spot right after Paraquats, right? Not that I recall. Um, but you'd agree with me that your prior testimony was that in order to get one of those Life 360 pings, you need to have service, right? Somewhat. I'm not too sure how that works, actually. Um, let me ask you, wh whose ultimate decision was it between the three of you, or was it a group decision to take those items from that area? Um. I think it was a, a group decision. I mean, I wasn't really a part of it. I was still very upset about finding all of those things. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure. Okay, can you, did, I know you couldn't testify as to um, who carried things ultimately, but did you see how they were placed in the back of the, or where were they placed ultimately to get transported back? Um, in the back of the truck. Okay. And I guess, um, how did you folks, the three of you, get transported back? Uh, with, uh, with Molly's truck. Okay, and I think Molly was driving? Yes. Who was in the, is uh, one of those four-seater trucks or just? Um, the two in the front and the three in the back. Okay, and so who sat in the passengers? Max did. And where did you sit? In the back. Uh, when you say in the back, is that back seat or in the? Back seat. Okay, so would it be fair to say nobody sat in the back portion of the truck where the items were placed? Yeah. It was just the items and Molly's motorcycle? Yes. Was there anything else in that back of the truck? Um, not that I saw. Um, and then your testimony would be that it was taken to the Haiku house at that point? Yes. Now, um, can you testify as to um, the condition of those items while you folks were driving? Did they all stay in one place or did, or did they shift around in the back of the truck? Uh, from what I saw, they stayed in the same exact place. Okay, and, and if you saw that, what? How were they, I guess, in the, in the truck? How and, I guess, let me ask you this. Where did you see them in the truck to have made that observation? Um, from what I saw, they were placed in the back, uh, right next to the tailgate, um, on the opposite side of the bike, Molly's bike. Okay, so your testimony is that in terms of the placement of those items, all of them were in one position, and that would have been towards the furthest rear passenger side of the back of that truck. Yes. And essentially, it would be posi positioned such that the tailgate being up would corner it in and keep it from it was falling from yeah. behind the truck. Yeah. And where was the DVD at that point in time? I believe it was with <clears throat> all of the other items. on one thing here and let me ask you when you testified about the image on your mother's phone you recall testifying about that yes and that was an image that you observed back on February 10th of 2014 yes okay, and then your testimony is that essentially you were able to recognize this area uh, on the 13th of February based on that image from the 10th uh, yes now,
when you testified on direct as to the reason why you never checked out that area prior to February 13th, my understanding was that your testimony was that you needed someone to take you out there because you were too young. Is that accurate? Yes. Um, you'd agree with me that the image that we're talking about back on February 10th, 2014, was not an image on your phone, was it? Um, which image? The original image with Charlie on it that you testified about seeing. Um, with the face swap, right? No, about the ping location oh. from February 10th. You'd agree with me that <clears throat> that image was not on your phone. It was on your mother's phone, right? I had seen it on my phone very briefly, but it was, I um, originally saw it on my mom's phone. And your mother was the one who originally did it, and that's the one that you even based your desire to search that area on on the 13th. You based that on as well, right? Uh, yes, but on my phone it shows the same exact image. Okay, but you did that after you saw your mom's image, right? And Judge, objection is possible. This has been asked and answered already. The objection is I mean, when you talked about that whole image, you weren't talking about what you saw on your phone. You were talking about what you saw on your mother's phone, right? Um, I mean, they're both the same thing. But when you drew that image, that was what you remembered seeing on your mother's phone, right? Judge, objection. This has been asked and answered. She's been clear about it. Thank you. If it were on your phone, would you have told anyone else who were helping you in the search? Objection form, the question is argumentative. I'll withdraw the question. The question is Let me ask you this. Was the image on your mother's phone exactly like how you illustrated? Um, yeah. And that would be with the exception of the Charlie symbol, which you kind of drew the little square for? Um, yes, I mean, where I drew it would have been where her spot was. Okay. Now, Regarding the pictures, the one that you drew on, as well as the one that you testified about relative to those ping locations, are those the exact images that you saw, let me ask you first, on your mother's phone back on February 10th, 2014, as you recall it? Yes. Okay, so that wasn't a call out or an enlargement of any type, that was the exact image that came on your mom's phone? Uh, yes. Okay. And it wasn't like that was something that you folks had zeroed in on, that was the image that came? Um, yeah, so when you click on Charlie's name, it automatically will zoom into that location. So it's not like there was a broader map that you guys focused down to that map, right? Um, no, I mean, you could zoom out of it, but when you first click on it, yeah, it takes you, on, I believe, straight to the that uh, zoom-in spot. Okay, so would it be your testimony that you folks actually went through that process of zooming it out to determine that location back in February? <coughs> yes. And who did that? I believe it was a few different people. We were all trying to figure out where the location was. Okay, and were you one of them? Yes. Who else? I believe my mom looked. Um, I believe I had asked Johnny to check it out. Um, 
there were a lot of just random people that I had asked to help me figure out the location, and I can't really look at the names. Well, you, testi you testified about map people before. Are, were those people involved in this endeavor? Um, yes, the, the map people that I was referring to were the random people that were helping search. Okay, now when you talk about this, looking at this area in a broader picture and trying to figure it all out, was this back on February 10th? Um, yes, it was. When it was guys... February 10th that I had asked, or me and my mom were looking at it. Um, and then up to the 13th, I had asked a few other people. Okay, but you, this, in terms of Johnny's participation in that and um, <coughs> your mother's, that started as early as the 10th in terms of enlarging it to look at a larger map? Yeah. And is it your testimony that you folks had actually concluded by the 10th that this was Paraquat's area? Um, I can't recall if it was on the 10th that we decided that that was the location. Well, wouldn't you agree with me that you folks came up with the conclusion that it was the Honomang Bay area? Oh, uh, yeah, it was near that, that area. And that's distinct from what you refer to as the Paraquats area? Um, it, it's near, and I believe it was like one or two bends away, and that's how I recognized it. <clears throat> well, you folks came to the conclusion it was Honomonude, right? Because I've checked that this relies on hearsay. The objection is Let me ask you this. In trying to figure out the location based on those initial February 10th images, did you folks ever make any kind of enlargements printed out in, in, you know, to kind of figure out the map that's printed out? Um, on, on the 10th, we did that. You guys did that on the 10th? No. Um I know that we did enlarge some maps, but I'm not too sure on which day we had done that. Okay, when you say you enlarge some maps, would this be the map, a map from the image on your mother's phone or some other map? It was some other map. Okay. Did at any point you folks enlarge and print out the image on your mother's phone, for example, to give searchers to say, hey, Here's the last spot where we believe Chief Charlie John, was. You know, objection. This this relies on hearsay. It's also speculation, and it's not part of the testimony. Uh, the the objection is overruled. Um, no, we had not blown up that picture on my mom's phone. So, nor did you folks, at any time between February 10th and February 13th, pass out any maps based on that image to tell people, hey, go search here. No, we had no objection on the compound question. There's two parts to it. The objection is sustained. Let me ask you this. Have you ever personally seen any printed copies of that image from your mother's phone? No. Prior to February 13th, well, actually, let me sh move it further. Prior to February 10th, were you familiar with the area known as Paraquats? No, I was not. Had that name, Paraquats, even been in your um, realm of knowledge? No. So when was the first time you hear this word, Paraquats? I believe it was, I can't recall for sure, but I believe it was Thursday. You're saying the day that you, you folks found all this stuff? Yeah. <clears throat> and I take it that the nearest, most remarkable land spot, uh, landmark in the area to use as reference 
for this Paraquas area would be the Kenai Peninsula, if you're looking at a map? Um, yes, but I wasn't familiar with that area, so I mostly used Honomanu as my, um, my base off of that. Well, on that note, the fact is you didn't even know that Paraquats was on the Haiku side of Kenai Peninsula, right? No. You thought Paraquats was on the Hana side of the Kenai Peninsula, right? I believe so. Honestly, I didn't really know where it was. I just knew that that was the location. Do you know now whether that area is on the Hana side of the Kenai Peninsula or on the Haiku side of the Kenai Peninsula? I actually don't. I think it's Hana side. I think it's Hana side of the Kenai Peninsula, right? Yeah. And that's how you were able to locate that bend in the road, right? Um, I just had counted how many bends, and that's kind of how I figured out that spot. You counted the bends in the road to Hana? Um, from uh, Hana Manu to uh, Charlie's location. I mean, you'd agree with me that when you folks plan to go check out the area, even before, you were referring to it as paraquats, right? So I'm sure she knows the vague. I can re-ask the question. Vague. All right, the question is which one? The first things you testified to today was that you came up with the request for Max and Molly to go search with you at Paraquats, right? I hadn't used that word, I don't believe. I just said Charlie's last location. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I am not too positive on when I found out that Paraquats was called Paraquats. Okay. Let me ask you this. You folks were all in the same cab of the truck driving home back up to the Haiku house after leaving that Paraquats area, correct? Yes. Can you tell us how many stops total you folks made between Paraquats and the Haiku home? I know we made one for sure. Um, Okay, what was that? Uh, that was to make the phone calls, which I believe was after Bamboo Forest. Um, and when I, you say after Bamboo Forest, is that closer to Haiku or the KNI area? I believe it's closer to Haiku. Yeah. And is it your testimony that that's the only stop you folks made prior to making it up to the Haiku <coughs> house? I can't recall for sure if we had made another stop. Um, when someone else's phone had gotten service. Okay, so you're talking about possibly a, a stop to have made a phone call? Uh, yes. Did you guys stop back at the community center to pick up a car? No. Okay, so your testimony is no other stops? Yes. Now, having been in that same cab with the other two individuals, can you describe to us how many phone calls were made during that uh, drive back from Paraquats to Haiku? Well, we should like a foundation at this point. She was in the same cab? That doesn't mean she knows how many phone calls were made. The objection was sustained. Were you in view of the other people in that same truck cab? throughout that ride home? I was in view of them, yes. Were you in listening range of them? Uh, yes. Okay. How many other phone calls were made during that ride between Paraquats and the Haiku home? Again, you're in this lack of foundation just because they were in the same cab. The objection is Do you know, do you have personal knowledge as to, well, let me ask you this. On the ride between Paraquats and the Haiku home, 
Did you observe Max trying to use his telephone? I don't recall Max trying <coughs> to use his phone. Did you observe Molly trying to use her telephone? I believe I did see Molly uh, using her phone. Did you observe whether she ended up talking with somebody as if there was a connection or whether she was frustrated because she wasn't able to speak with somebody? Objection, you know, that's speculation. The objection is to speak. Did you hear Molly speaking with anybody? Um. <coughs> While we were stopped, not that I recall, I just remember talking to my mom. Yeah, I'm sorry, while you were stopped, you don't recall her talking to anybody, but what was the, the final part of your answer? Um, I only recall talking to my mom. Okay, so you don't know then, okay, so is your testimony that while you were talking with your mom, she may have been talking on her phone, is that your testimony? Objections, that's not her testimony, it's based on speculation. Yes, yes, yes. That's why I'm asking her whether it's Yes, right, it's the right so question, Your Honor. You can't ask her speculation. Okay, well, thank you. Did you hear Molly speaking to somebody while you were talking with your mother? Asked and answered, Your Honor. Objection. Hasn't been answered. Objection is no correct. You may answer the question. Not that I recall. I really only remember um, just the conversation with my mom or having the conversation with my mom. Okay, let me ask you this. How long were you on the phone with your mother for? Probably less than five minutes. So you were on your on the phone with your mother for up to four minutes? I believe so. I can't recall for sure. And your testimony is that at no time in those four minutes did you decide to call the police? Objection. There's no testimony about four minutes, Your Honor. The objection is overruled. You may answer the question. Um, I, not me personally, we were just focused on getting back. I told my mom what we had found, and she said that she was going to call the police. So your mother said she was going to call the police, and is that your, is it, would it be your testimony then that that's why you didn't call the police? We started driving, so I lost service. That's okay, no, this is a yes or no answer. Is, is it your testimony then? Objection, Your Honor, this is not a yes or no answer. She can answer the question. Let me withdraw the question and ask the yes or no answer then. The question is withdrawn. Is it your testimony then that you decided not to call the police during that time when you had service because your mother told you that she was going to call the police? Yes. When you get up to that haiku house, would it be fair to say that the police are not there? Uh, yeah, they, they weren't there at that point. Now, from the area that you made contact with your mother to the haiku house, how long did it take you to drive that distance? I believe it was um, around maybe 20, 25 minutes. <clears throat> Would you agree with me that you folks had phone service <clears throat> in between the time that you spoke with your mother and the time that you folks reached the haiku home? Injection, lack of foundation. The objection is over. You may answer the question. I believe um, at one point my phone did get service, uh, but then my phone had died, so I wasn't too sure about the rest of the way. Well, you know there was service because you folks started receiving texts, right? Um, 
at one point, yes, but my phone did die, so I, I wasn't too sure. You folks started receiving texts saying that the police want you guys to leave the items Ob where they were found, right? Objection, Your Honor, this calls for speculation on the other phones as well as the information, and that calls for hearsay. The objection. <coughs> Thank you.